welcome back to Worthington Model Railways. Um, I've been busy laying the rest of that area of track that I started on uh, a few weeks ago and I did a video on issues and problems with it. Um, I was uh, having trouble, well, you know, sometimes things are just in short supply, so I was having trouble getting the cork underlay that I needed to finish it. Um, and then uh, I was also having trouble getting Pico Flex track. Um, I use the uh, the SL100 and I get it shipped over from the UK. You can't buy it in the US, but it's about twice the price that it is, even with shipping from the UK, because of course I don't pay that. Anyway, um, so I got a, a box of that, so I was able to do some more of that laying of track. Um, I'll give you a quick overview of what what I did there. Um, it's sort of all drying right now. I didn't think you wanted to see me try another time to lay a point, although this one went down fine with no problem. It wasn't like the last one where I had to rip it all up and redo it, so maybe I, I learned a lesson from that. Anyway, um, we'll take a quick look at what I was doing, and then I have another job today, and this is a wiring job, so uh, after we've looked at the track, I'll come back and explain yeah, what, what I'm going to do. What I'll do is after I take all this stuff on that's just sitting there while it dries, um, I'll give you a better quick look at it later. When I started building this layout, I was trying to decide whether to stick with DC, which is sort of what I've known and what I've done for years, or whether to go with DCC. And I did a fair bit of research. I must admit, initially, I was a little scared of DCC. I didn't really know what it did or understand it. I watched a lot of YouTube videos, um, particularly uh, Charlie from Chadwick Model Railway. Um, he explains DCC really well and makes me sort of less scared of it. The other thing about it was I had a lot of locomotives and for the most part they were all DC. And uh, I was wondering you know, about conversion to DCC. Um, I probably got about 20 or 30 locos that were not DCC ready or fitted, um, mainly from the 90s, early 2000s, um, that I've upgraded and put DCC chips in, um, both just regular DCC chips and sound ones too. So, um, and if I can do it, uh, pretty much anybody can do it. It's, it, it's a little scary, but it's not that bad. Um, however, I did keep a single DC line on the layout. Um, if we look here, um, you'll see this outer track here is DC. So it's a single track, it's isolated, it's not connected to any other part of the layout. It's DC. So I can run DC on this all day long. Um, this is DCC and the track's at top of DCC. So, um, you know, I've got this mix and it, and it works pretty well. It's, it's, it's not difficult to do. Now, the one thing I kind of decided that I probably need to do is look into power zones. Um, Right now I've got three DCC tracks and I've had a couple of occasions. One was with a faulty uh, Hornby Princess that was DCC fitted when I got it um, that have caused me some consternation and problems with DCC. I mean, my controller got like so, not the controller, the actual uh, smart booster, when the thing got so hot, hot you couldn't touch it. Um, so what I want to do is I want to put in three power zones, one for each DCC track. So each track will be isolated, which means if something goes wrong with one track, I can still run stuff on the other tracks. Of course, you know, when the princess died, it was when my wife had invited a few people over to see the layout in progress, and I started running trains, and after about five minutes of sudden, everything just stopped. Um, that's the problem with DCC, is if you get some sort of problem or short on the track, and everything's gonna gonna stop. So I have invested in a DCC Specialities PX3. Uh, PX3, they do one, two, three, four. Basically, it's a set of circuit boards. Um, the three has three of these. The four has four. One and two. That you can just add them. You can actually separate them. They're not, you know, stuck together. So um, 
I want to install these and I want to install one for each of my three main tracks. Um, and so those tracks will be on separate power zones and hopefully that will help if there's a problem. Now I was trying to determine how many power zones I wanted. Um, I might add a fourth power zone when I get the fiddle yard all completed, um, which is going at this end of the layout. And, and I'm, I'm waiting on Pico points. Um, Pico points seem to be very difficult to get right now, and I don't quite understand why, but I've had them on order for oh, three three, four months. And um, still don't see them, and I've been pinging hat and saying what's going on, and they said to me, oh, end of February, then it was end of March, and who knows when, but until I get that, I can't get all that done. So I might add another, um, another power zone when I get that done. But uh, this is what I want to do. Now, the issue is to do this, I have got to basically take apart my existing power bus. Um, I use uh, droppers on a, on a power bus and create three power buses, one for each zone. So each one of these boards will be connected to the smart booster in parallel, actually I think in series. Um, and then from there, each one will output to a different track and there'll be three power zones, but it's a lot of wiring work that's got to go on. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the wiring um, bus by bus so I'll disconnect the outer track well actually what I'll do is I'll disconnect the two two of the tracks from the existing bus and then run two new sets of bus wires under the layout for the third one and while I'm at it I'm going to clean up the wiring because this wiring was kind of done on a temporary basis because somewhere in the back of my head I knew that I was going to be uh, redoing this at some point and so it's one of those jobs that I keep putting off. Um, I am going to start on it. Um, I don't know if I will get it finished this weekend, but uh, I'm planning to work on it pretty much all week and hopefully we'll get it finished by next weekend. And in the meantime, if I want to run a train, I'll just run it on the DC part of the, the layout. I mean, that just works, right? So, um, that's pretty much it for this. I'm, I'm going to sort of show you what I'm doing as I'm going. Uh, some of it, uh, just running wires is going to be pretty boring, so I probably won't show that until it's sort of finished. Um, but I will go through what I need to do to wire these up. And there's a couple of gotchas. Um, there's a good instruction leaflet, leaflet, and it explains there's certain things you have to set for NCE. So um, I'm going to know go through this and, and make sure that I understand what I'm doing and I get these things set up right but I'm, I'm not expecting it to be too difficult um, I, I think it should be pretty easy to do it so I'll be back um, as I do stuff so first thing I'm going to do is actually wire these into the smart booster and then once I get these in the smart booster then uh, we can uh, we can start to add the output so you know this basically the input comes in here goes from here to here here to here and then there's three outputs for the three power zones which will go to the track okay I will be this back. is the heart of my DCC system uh, you'll also see the DC controller there um, an RBO2 wireless receiver connected into an SB5 this is all NCE a smart booster um, I have JMRI on this laptop and a connector down there i've also got this dcc concepts alpha meter which is really nice because it shows me what's going on and then i get two uh nce pro cabs they're both wireless ones so i can use those i also have an nce power cab which i use for programming but that's on the programming track i don't use that on the main layout so um this is this is my setup here uh, works pretty well uh, I'm just getting into the JMRI stuff. I will kind of start to do more with that. And uh, this is an old laptop that uh, I pressed into service to do that. So as I'm starting to add more components, I decided I need to 
get myself a board and install these on the board. So I'm just going to lay them out and then uh, I've got to use some spacers because these circuit boards need to sit up a little bit so that the, the stuff on the back isn't on the board and then this one's going to need a hole cut. So I'm going to go and cut a hole for that one and uh, we'll be back when we've installed this on the board. Um, what I'm going to use uh, are these little nylon centered uh, nuts because they're just enough to keep the things off and they'll, they'll work the right size so I have a whole box full of these things so I'm just going to use some of these to lift stuff off the board so let's get stuff on the board and we'll show you the finished result I'm going to screw these down with a regular screwdriver because I don't want to crack the PCB, the circuit board so easier to tighten them down by hand I think two is enough, I don't think I need more than two on that one so let's get the other one on the other thing is this board is going to have wires coming in from behind and going out from behind or in from behind and out from behind so I'm going to put some holes here for that so there I have my board all mounted uh, next to my controller shelf and things so um, should be good so now I start wiring stuff up okay because I'm an NCE power cab user I need to program CB49 so I connected up my power cab to the first controller and went through the process need to uh, go through this we need to go to program on main hit enter enter 2 is CV CV number 49 enter value of 1 enter and then I should be good now so let me do that on all three of them and see what happens people ask about wires, wire cutters um, this is 16 gauge stranded copper 2 mm diameter 36 strands that's what I use for my bus I use a slightly uh, different wire on my droppers but uh, and in terms of tools I love these wire strippers uh, I got multiple different types but these just work so well they have a gauge here for different gauge so you put it on the gauge comes down grabs the wire pulls the end right off perfect every single time so uh, I don't know where these came from but uh, these are my favorite absolute favorite wire strippers okay I'm gonna keep going with my wiring here see it's very easy to wire up it's just black and red go in one end and you just daisy chain the multiple boards together so what I'm gonna do right now is gonna I'm gonna attach the main bus output to power zone one and uh, see if that actually works and that we can see that what we did was right um, and then check the others and then I'm gonna start dismantling the wiring under the boards um, my wiring as I say it would give somebody like uh, Charlie from Chadwick Model Row as a heart attack although um, it is all color-coded but as you see it's kind of a mess under here so we're gonna sort that out so with everything connected up to uh, power zone 1 you can see we have the loco is running so everything looks to be good all right now let's start on pulling wires apart so I did say I'd post an update on the track that I was laying earlier so here you can see uh, I can't actually run anything on this track because because of the points it's isolated and there are droppers but I haven't connected the droppers up yet and I ain't connecting them up now um, when I'm going to re-disconnect them all so uh, once we get the multiple zones in place we'll reconnect all of this stuff so what I've decided to do so I can make my life easier when I'm putting this bus together is I've changed the colors on the other two buses so this one is going to be uh, yellow and black and this one is going to be red and blue with the first one being black and red um, that way when I'm messing around with the layout I will know which power zone I'm connecting up to what 
So um, I think I'm going to call it a day on this video at this point. I mean, basically all I have to do now is go around and disconnect and reconnect wires, which is pretty boring for anybody to watch. But uh, hopefully this piece of it was interesting. And uh, I will... Yeah, I'm going to take a few days to get all this done. It's not going to get done overnight. Um, I've got to pull a lot of stuff out and crawl underneath all these tracks to to get wire run. And when I run the wire, I want to uh, to change things so I don't have wires dangling. All the wires will be firmly attached to the underside of the of the board, so we'll clean all that up. So, okay, um, thanks for watching, and we'll post another video at some point soon. Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can subscribe from the button on the right and there's another video on the left.